everyone, this is Calimara here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. I'm so glad you're joining me here because I've had quite a few of you asking when the next Wild Word video was coming, and I apologize for taking so long to get to it. This has been sitting in my video folder for a while three months at least as an unfinished sketch, but I'm so glad that I managed to finish it in time for the new year. So happy holidays! <laughs> it's really rather fitting too because today we are going to be wrapping up character introductions with the fourth and final member of the main girls team, the Tiger Aegis. For those of you who guessed the Wolf Aegis would be the fourth member, sorry but good guess. In case you've never watched any of my videos before and this is the first video you found of mine, Wild Word is my original magical girl story about adults with magical transforming accessories who need to balance their adult lives and daily struggles with magical girl work and is meant to be a more gritty and mature take on the genre. I also have an important announcement to make. As the Wild Word story will soon begin, I am looking for voice actors who would be interested in doing voiceovers for the main cast of characters and some background characters. The concept I'm going with these stories is that it'll be something of a visual novel and I'll be publishing the story chapter by chapter as individual videos on my channel and you can also find the full text form later on on AO3 if that's how you prefer to consume it. Starting from the day this video gets published, which should be the 18th, until the 22nd of January, I will be opening up a casting call for people who would want to voice some characters in the story, including the main protagonist. Of course, I will be paying you for your time and service, so if you or someone you know are a voice actor looking for some VA work, please check out the brief that is linked in my description and send your audition to wildwordauditions at gmail.com. I look forward to listening to your audition and potentially working with you. And with that, let's get on with the video! Fearsome, ever watching, ever listening, lethal. She is the disembodied gaze that watches you in the dead of night, the unshakable presence that raises the hair on the back of your neck. She is the wielder of the Tiger Aegis. Amura. Strong, silent, unwavering, she is the sight that strikes a mobilizing fear into the hearts of those who gaze upon her. A relentless hunter, a stalker in the shadows. To become Amura's prey is to meet certain demise. Once she has her sights locked on you, there is no escape. And by the time you see her, it will already be too late. Perhaps you might wonder how such a towering figure clad in bulging muscle and painted skin could have evaded your detection so adeptly, and yet you find yourself ambushed all the same. Standing at seven feet tall, Amura dwarfs the other members of her team with ease. With striking red hair and glistening amber fur, her entire being seems to glow with the intensity of hot embers, interwoven by streaks of dark coal that seem to fuel them brighter. Bright, Dancing flames are captured in her smoldering irises, a perfect mirror of the sentinel stone that is embedded in her navel, seemingly capable of burning holes into any unfortunate soul that dare meet her gaze. She moves with militaristic discipline, well-practiced, well-trained, methodical. Amura knows her way around the battlefield, and there she dominates. To call Amura a force of nature is no overstatement. Her armor limit is among the highest and combined with her improved hearing and increased balance from her animal parts, she is near impossible to pin down and subdue. Her claws are lethal in their own right, her strength unparalleled, and her physique a dream that very few can ever hope to achieve. Though her towering figure and well-sculpted form is awe-inspiring on its own, it is her aura that truly makes her seem giant, her killing intent, her dignified posture and piercing gaze. For some, it is enough to bring them to their knees and surrender. Yet despite her fiery disposition, Amura's face is still and severe, like a trained soldier, or the surface of a boiling magma pool, occasionally broken by bursts of emotion rising to the top. When she curls her lip in a snarl, 
Her fangs strike fear into those who dare cross her. Her roar is deafening, immobilizing. The sound alone is sufficient to weaken the knees and envelop one in a sense of dread, leaving those in the vicinity with the feeling of impending doom, gripping their entire beings with overwhelming terror. Her strength alone is capable of demolishing buildings, splitting mountains, and shredding metal. A single strike from her is more than enough to pulverize an average human, protected by armor or otherwise. It is no wonder that this Aegis was once sought after by conquerors and kings, those who had no qualms over waging war and destruction to get what they want. Facing Amura is not for the faint of heart. She is the name that people whisper from fear of evoking her presence. She is the monster in the darkness that you check over your shoulder twice to ensure nothing is there. A presence too large to escape or overcome. Even among her peers, she is an individual who is difficult to read. Stoic. Unflinching. Isolated. Despite the best efforts of her teammates, Amura remains an outlier among her peers. There are moments of stillness. Fault lines that breach the apex predator's resolve. Just because she is fearsome does not make her fearless, and just because she is strong does not mean she cannot be weak. These moments are rare and hidden well when they occur. Despite all the strength she possessed, she lacks the strength it takes to ask for help. She is the person her team turns to when the situation is dire. She is the raw power that cuts through no matter the odds, the rock that her teammates lean on when all else fails. She is the finisher that ends all battles. As such, a heavy weight rests on her shoulders, one seemingly equal to the pressure she exerts. Her steps are heavy, not from the great weight of her physique, but the shadow that hangs over her psyche. An unknowable, uncommunicable burden that stalks her the same way she stalks her prey. Unrelenting, unshakable, like Atlas, to be blessed with immense strength yet cursed to carry the world on his shoulders. As such, her Aegis weapon manifests as a colossal gatling gun. Its crystalline surface gleams with entrapped embers, fueling devastating power worthy of the tiger Aegis. The gun's weight is immense and cannot be hefted by any other Aegis user. A single round of its ammunition is enough to level anything in its path. However, unlike the other Aegis, her gatling will be rendered useless once Amura runs out of ammunition, forcing her to use her weapon conservatively. However, given the nature of the Tiger Aegis, Amura may also opt to load the entirety of her power in a one-and-done shot that transforms her gatling into a rocket launcher. This devastating attack guarantees annihilation of those that get caught in its blast radius. If this special attack hits another Aegis user, it will breach their armor limit instantly and force them to detransform. However, after this attack, Amura will not be able to use her weapon again. But this does not mean that she is left completely defenseless. Her battle proficiency extends past her automated weapons, and she is a force to be reckoned with in hand-to-hand -hand combat. She is well-versed in mixed martial arts, moving with the experience and tactics of a well-trained soldier. Effective, straightforward, brutal. Amura is a fighter through and through. As such, her body is adorned with the marks of the tiger, exemplifying her ferocity and striking fear into the hearts of her enemies. Her clothes resemble that of combat gear. Her flowing, crimson scarf dances freely in the wind, adding a touch of calm and grace to her quick, urgent movements. She is both the calm and the might of the storm, a powerhouse unfamiliar with defeat. Those who know of Amura fear her unconditionally. She is the monster in the woods that parents use to scare their children from wandering in at night. An urban legend among youths who seek to test their courage. To adults, she is a wild animal. Dangerous, large, and territorial. Signs have been put up, curfews enacted, and hunting parties dispatched to subdue and relocate her. But those who have crossed paths with her tell fantastical stories of a colossal beast towering taller than the trees with eyes the color of hellfire, an eldritch being that stalks and hunts, waiting for the right moment to strike 
and then tearing her prey apart limb from limb, but never consuming them. Many experience vivid, recurring nightmares after their encounter. Among the urban legends of Bougainville, Amura is undoubtedly one of the most infamous of all. For Amura's design, I really wanted to focus on sharp lines and harsh edges. It's a bit of a similar shape philosophy to Fel Noir, but I think that having similarities work in their favor because they're both felines. However, it's much harsher and more exaggerated on Amura to better communicate the aggression and ferocity that I want to evoke with her. Because she is such a combat-heavy character, I wanted her to be dressed in practical and heavy-duty clothes. I'm not really sure what the aesthetic is called, but I'm calling it combat fashion, and it's a really popular style of dress that is meant to evoke police and military gear. I think it looks extremely badass, and it's also relevant to Amura's civilian backstory. However, I worried that compared to the other designs I've done, Amura's suit might be too plain, so I try to incorporate elements like belts and harnesses to add some complexity and provide the appearance of striping to match her tiger theme, hopefully without overwhelming viewers because I am aware that there are a lot of stripes happening already, especially when her Gatling gun comes into play, as you might see from the second pose. This character in particular has a signature piece of clothing that she cannot go without, which is her scarf, so naturally I wanted to incorporate that in her Aegis design. I think it adds a nice delicate touch to the rough and tough design. However, I was worried that it made her look too top heavy, so I needed something around her waist to balance it out. And that's where her ammunition belt comes in. Just having oversized hanging belts of ammo felt like a good answer to her scarf in terms of design balance, and it also gave me the idea for how I could balance Amura's immense attack power by limiting the amount of ammo she has to fire with. For some accents, I decided to alternate the color of the ammo between copper and black to fit her motive, and mechanically, I was thinking that the color of the ammunition would change the power of Amura's attack when she fires from her Gatling gun. For instance, rounds of black ammo do one and a half times more damage than the regular copper ammo, which gives her attack an extra sting to whoever it hits. Naturally, combat boots were the way to go, but to mix things up a bit and make it look more unique, I decided to color it in the same way that tiger paws are patterned. And I think it looks really good and is actually kind of cute. Now, Amura already comes with a lot of patterns being the Tiger Aegis, so it was really a delicate balance between making her look too busy and too plain. I am a bit worried that I made her suit too plain compared to the others, but I think it's a necessary sacrifice in order to balance the busyness of her marks, fur, and hair patterns. So this is the final result. Let me know what you think in the comments below. that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. As I've said in the beginning of the video, I am looking for voice actors to help bring my story to life. So if you or anyone you know would be interested in the position, please send them my way. Keep in mind that the deadline for the casting call is the 22nd of January and the full cast will hopefully be announced by the 31st. Thank you for following my series so far. It really means a lot to me. I also want to give special thanks to my lovely pond dwellers for supporting me on Patreon. Depending on how the series goes, I might need to rely more heavily on my Patreon support to get higher quality videos out for the story, so it'd be awesome to get more support on there. Plus, you could also get early access to my content and my cosplay pictures because I do dabble in that as well. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art, tag me on Twitter. If you want to chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic and my Wild Word series here on YouTube or the other videos in this playlist uh, because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!